when's the last time you got something good in the mail? Good that was a surprise, good that was really cool, or good that was a relic? Well, if you're a mail geek, a TV geek, a weather geek, you might geek out at what streaming anchor Brad Edwards got. And with a special guest, what a special story it tells. We never get good stuff in the mail anymore. No, no. Until this happened. Inside this generic mailing, a manila envelope, one sent from WBBM-TV from forever ago. Look at that. Thursday, August 1st, 1957. Wow. Check this out. This is a weather map done by the great P.J. Hoff. I'm Mike Berkus, and I live in Monmouth, Oregon. Moved out here about 20 years ago from Indiana. And they'd write to him and they'd say, can I get one of your weather maps? She kind of felt like she won the lottery because she got one of the maps. She is Mike's dear and now deceased mother, Dorothy. It was a big deal. Addressed to and when Gary, Indiana favored Pleasantville. It was just a simpler time. I mean, it's it was a beaver cleaver time. My mom got it when I was little, like five years old. And I do remember her having all of her friends over to see it and they all admired it. How did you come across this? I came across it the other day when we were looking for some pictures and I was so excited. So my thought was to give it to WBBM and I hope that something good can happen to it. People found it entertaining as well as giving him the weather. He would do all these different characters. There was a character called the vice president of looking out the window. But even then, weather was more than just look to the west. P.J. Hoff. An engineer by trade, but so smart as to say, how do I take it and bring it down to the people? Took the weather facsimile from the weather service, turned it into this. P.J. Hoff was one of the first people to make weather entertaining. He would put a cloud maybe on the left-hand side of the map, and then he'd pull a string on the side of the map and the cloud would walk across the map. And as kids, when the weather was on, you didn't even peep. TV was relatively new. And I do remember as a little kid that when the weather was done, off to bed. <laughs> Brad, I'm not young. I was two years old when this map was made. P.J. Hoff was the first in a line of WBBM's legendary weathermen. the Chicago area, even as we speak. I beg your pardon. John Coughlin. Was next. Right. That's twice in one month, folks. They got him tutoring uh, from Ted Fujita, uh, Mr. Tornado at the University of Chicago, that the Fujita scale that we rank tornadoes on uh, was named after. Imagine him being your teacher to learn weather. I mean, it's amazing. As you see the magic of the Channel 2 weather board turning before your eyes. Then, Perry Volkman. On TV, he would like a cold front coming in. It is a whoosh. From man-made maps to magnets. Uh, is that a tornado? And that's a tornado, and that's a thunderstorm. Is this the oldest of this iteration you think you've ever seen, August 1st, 1957? Uh, yeah, it is. The story of weather as a story started with P.J. Hoff, let's bring it down to the level everybody can understand and let's send this in the mail and it's it's social media, right? This is social media version one. That's right, yeah, to interact with people. And that meant something. Somebody sent this to you. They've kept this for 65 years. <clears throat> 66 actually, but you know, <laughs> It's just math. Brad Edwards, CBS 2 News. Wow. All right, no pressure, Albert. Right? But forget this newfangled technology. When yeah. are we going to get a sun with a nice big nose and some clouds <laughs> yeah. walking across the screen? I think I want to yeah. run for president of looking out the window, <laughs> right. too. It's a nice story. Yeah, yeah we are, go ahead. Back then, you had to not only be a, a scientist, yeah. a meteorologist, but you had to be almost an artist. For right? sure. I mean, that's a piece of art right there. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, so lucky to have Ed Curran in right. the weather office. He is a walking of knowledge. almanac. That guy knows so much about the Chicago history and weather history. We're so lucky to have him. We've got a little set with all the archives. That map yep. needs to go up right over there. I think there. you're right. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll laminate it or something <laughs> so we can preserve it. So let's use a little bit better technology than uh, <laughs> you know right. some construction paper. <laughs> we'll see how we do about 24 hours from now.